hi guys welcome to this thick tutorial in this series of programming peak microcontroller with MPLAB XC8 compiler in this tutorial we're gonna learn how to use the analog to digital converter analog to digital converters allow continuous voltage to be converted into discrete digital numbers inside the peak as the peak can only process digital numbers this can enable the peak to be connected to analog sensors such as temperature sensors pressure sensors humidity sensors optical sensors and so on most of peak microcontrollers nowadays have more than one analog to digital converters like the peak 18f 45k 22 it's got 27 analog channels these channels are noted by the letters an an0 is analog channel 0 an1 is analog channel 1 and so on if i connected an analog sensor let's say to pin re1 then it's going to be connected to analog channel 6. An analog signal is a signal which is directly measurable in terms of some other quantities. Let's say in terms of temperature, the mercury liquid inside the thermometer rises as the temperature rises. In terms of an audio amplifier, the volume of an audio amplifier increases as you turn the knob. This is in contrast of a digital signal which can only have two status, it's either one or it's either zero, it's on or it's off. For example, a switch can only have two status, either the switch is closed, which can be represented by digital one, or the switch is open, which can be represented by digital zero. As the peak can only understand digital values, the zeros and ones, so any analog voltage from an input sensor has to be converted into an equivalent digital format so that the peak could be able to read it and process it further. To connect an analog sensor to a peak microcontroller, it's very easy. Let's say I want to connect an analog sensor to my channel zero. I'm just going to take a potentiometer which is a variable resistor to represent any variable input signal. All you need is connect to your input. By the way, any sensor which can have an output from 0 to 5 can be directly connected to a peak microcontroller. If the output voltage is higher than 5 volt, a method to step it down should be used such as voltage divider with resistors. I'm gonna connect my power. The reference voltage is gonna be five volt, five volt to ground. So if I can change the value of this resistor, this variable resistor by turning the knob, when the knob is in the center, which is about 50%, then the voltage across this resistor, the voltage read by the peak microcontroller is going to be 50% of the supply voltage, which is going to be around 2.5 volt. MPLAB XC8 has got a peripheral library help document for peak 18F series microcontrollers that you can use to access the analog to digital functions. You can access you can access this help document inside the installation folder of your compiler. If you install your compiler in C drive, program files, look for microchip, microchip, XC8, docs, and open the MPLAB XC8 peripheral libraries. The easiest way is to search for the peak you are looking for. I'm using the peak 18F2580. Enter. Click select your peak. 
It says click here for peripheral library support details for this device. It's on page 660. These are the functions that you can use for analog to digital converter for this peak family. There is open ADC, set channel ADC, set channel convert ADC, convert ADC, BC ADC, read ADC, and close ADC. The busy ADC is used to find out if the ADC is still performing a conversion. If it returns one, this indicates that the ADC is still busy converting. But if it returns zero, then it indicates that the ADC has completed conversion. The close ADC is used to disable the analog to digital converter module. Convert ADC. This function starts the analog to digital conversion. The open ADC. This configures the analog to digital converter module. The set channel ADC select the ADC channel to be used. Let's see how we can use the open ADC because this function is used to configure the module for analog to digital converter. It's on page 848. Click on the link to go to the page. It says this function configures the analog to digital and start the conversion. The number of arguments that this function can take depend on the type of microcontroller used. The PIC 18F2580 takes three arguments. We've got the config argument, config2, and port config argument. Parameters are passed to argument or functions as bit mask created by performing either bitwise AND operation or bitwise OR operation. Let's start with the config argument and see how we can parameterize it. The first parameter is the ADC clock source. You can use either the oscillator frequency divided by 2, divided by 4, divided by 8, and so on. The second parameter is the ADC result justification. You can right justify the result, you can left justify your result, or you can mask the ADC result adjust. The next parameter is the AD acquisition time select. In order to enable the ADC to meet its specified accuracy, it is necessary to provide a certain time delay between selecting specific analog input and measurement itself. This time is called acquisition time and mainly depends on the source impedance. The ADC 0 TAD is the acquisition time of 0 TAD. This is 2 AD, this is 4 TAD and so on. The next argument is the config2. Here we can select the analog channel that we're gonna use depending on the number of analog channels available for the specific microcontroller. You can select other channel 0 if you're gonna use channel 0, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, and so on. The AD interrupt, if you're gonna use the interrupt for your ADC, the ADC int on is to enable the interrupt the int off is to disable the interrupt and the ADC int mask is to mask the interrupt enable disable. The AD VREF configuration is to select your voltage reference. If you select the ADC REF VDD VREF minus, if you're gonna use an external negative source at VREF negative, the VREF plus VREF minus. If you're gonna use external source at VREF plus and VREF minus, the VREF plus VSS, if you're gonna use external voltage at VREF plus and VREF minus as VSS, VREF VDD, VSS, you're gonna use the VDD, VREF plus as a VDD and VSS as a VREF minus. The ADC REF mask, 
is to mask the ADC VREF selection bit. The last parameter is the port config. We've got only one, one thing to parameterize. If you select ADC 0 ANA, then all the channels are, are digital. It means no channels going to be used as an analog channel. If you select ADC 1 ANA, then analog channel 0 is set as analog channel and the remaining channels are, are set as digital. ADC 2, analog 0 and analog 1 will be set as analog channels and the remaining channels will be digital and so on. Let's write a simple example and see how we can use the open ADC function. As you have learned earlier on, the PIC 18F2580 open ADC function takes three arguments. This is the first argument where we can configure the frequency. In this example, we're going to use the oscillator frequency divided by two. The result will be right justified. The acquisition time, we're going to use two TAD. In the second argument, we're going to select channel zero because we're going to connect our analog device to channel zero, AN0. The ADC interrupt is enabled and the voltage reference, we're going to use the ADC ref VDD VSS. It basically means the, the reference is going to be the VDD and the VSS, which is ground. The last parameter, we're going to select ADC 1A NA to set only channel 0 as analog and leave the rest as digital. Let us write a code for this circuit to display the voltage across my variable resistor on this LCD. If I turn the knob of my variable resistor, the voltage across it will change and it's going to be displayed on this LCD. This is the code. I've declared some few functions. The initialize ADC to configure my analog to digital converter. Let's go to this function first. I said the, the frequency divided by 2. The result is right justified. The acquisition time is 2 TAD. Gonna use channel 0. The interrupt is enabled. My voltage reference is VDD and VSS. And only channel 0 is gonna be set to analog. The next function is to initialize the LCD and the rest is the delays for the LCD. We have learned this in the LCD tutorial. I created three variables the ADC result, a float variable, voltage, and the string result string. This is to configure to use the internal oscillator 8 MHz. Can initialize my LCD, then initialize my ADC. The first function to use is put a SXLCD. This function is used to, to print a string of characters to the LCD. The first thing I'm going to display ADC on my LCD on the first line. Then shift the cursor to the beginning of the second line and display play voltage. After one second delay, I can clear off my screen. And in the while, while one loop, the first ADC function to call is the ADC in the convert ADC, this function is used to start the convention. Then while the convention is still going on, I shouldn't do anything else. So I'm going to wait here until the convention is done. Then I'm going to read the value of my convention. going to say ADC result equal to read ADC to read the converted value. Then what I need to do is to convert the ADC count into the voltage. Because my reference voltage is 5 volt, so I'm going to say the ADC result times 5 divided by 1024. The reason to use 1024 is because I'm using a 10-bit analog to digital converter. 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. 
The next important thing is to convert my ADC result into a string because I can only display a string value to my LCD. I've used the function sprintf, it's gonna convert the value of voltage into a string value and it's gonna store it in result string. The accuracy of my value is gonna be three digits after decimal point. The rest of the functions are LCD functions, the delay and initialize LCD. Let us run our simulation. Click run. ADC display value. And as you can see, the analog voltage across my variable resistor is displayed on the LCD. If I can turn the knob, you can see the voltage as read with the voltmeter is displayed on the LCD. And that's all for this tutorial, guys. The most important thing is to configure the open ADC function and the rest is straightforward. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be notified of new tutorials. Thank you.